China is facing an alarming situation as its economy is on the verge of a mega disaster. Economists are predicting that China is entering a deep recession that will be bigger than the Great Recession of 1929. Recession in China can lead to 500 million people losing their jobs and another 500 million people facing severe food crises as China is also facing historic drought. Things are already going from bad to worse as China is facing mutiny from its population. It's a revolt against mortgage payments as state-owned and private firms are unable to complete their planned real estate developments. China should pay attention to this mortgage crisis. For China, GDP growth stands at 0.4%, far away from the government expectation of 5.5% for 2022. China's debt bomb is ready to explode. China's total population debt tops 300% of GDP, which is 60% higher than the average debt of other countries. The average ratio of increasing debt is 11, but China's GDP grows slowly. Youth unemployment is at 20%. For the last three decades, the property sector has been driving the Chinese economy, as in 2022, real estate made up 30% of the Chinese economy. That's double the size of America's property and thrice of Europe. China's stock market has remained dormant since the 2008 recession. Right now, Chinese investors prefer to invest and store 70% of their wealth in real estate. The developers receive payments for pre-sold homes that make up 90% of all property sales. The active projects are completed by utilizing the borrowed money. As a result, a Ponzi scheme without assets came into being. Now, due to changing circumstances and defaults by real estate developers, consumers distrust the market and home prices have started to fall. As China's economy stumbles, homeowners boycott mortgage payments. These boycotts spread into 99 cities, affecting 320 projects, and became the largest mortgage protest in China's history. The boycotts affect the value of mortgage amounts up to $300 billion, or 5% of all mortgage lending. China's home buyers are running out of patience with the real estate slump. A boycott campaign is going on in China as the many mortgage holders refuse to pay up. And as a result of zero cash collection, the developers are forced to demolish half-finished buildings and stall projects to sell land to cover expenses. 50 million apartments report being empty, and thousands of partially completed buildings sit deserted. Over the last 12 months, new house sales kept on falling, attaining the longest decline after the reconstruction of the private property market of China three decades ago. If home sales continue to drop down, then 20% of construction companies in China will go bankrupt. Most of this catastrophe is self-inflicted because the inflated property bubble is on the edge of a crash. In the 1960s, the founder of today's China, Mao Zedong, was at the height of his popularity. He was revered as a father figure. But it was one of his economic policies that spelled disaster for the country. In 1958, Mao initiated the Great Leap Forward to shift the economy from agriculture to industry. What followed was the greatest famine, and people had to eat grass to survive. Now, Xi Jinping has powered the Chinese dream, taking the country to the edge of overtaking the United States. Through common prosperity, he prompts an economic resurrection. A critically labeled policy, the Great Leap Backwards. But this policy has started failing just two years after its implementation. Under this policy, curbs on business and the property sector have been introduced. Xi Jinping has famously said this on many occasions, that houses are for living in, not for speculation. And he introduced policies to tame the construction sector. China provided three red lines limiting in August 2020 how much developers could borrow. Less borrowing meant less money to complete projects, and soon we saw China become a country of ghost towns. There are 65 million empty homes in China, which is enough to house the population of France. It offers a glance into the country's huge housing market problem. Since 2020, $79 billion of wealth has been lost, with money drying up the top nine real estate companies in China. 
but there's one particular company who triggered the downfall and may very well take China down with it. Evergrande is the company who's at the center of the crisis, a company that's bringing down China by hurting China. 1,300 projects in 280 Chinese cities are owned by the giant real estate company. Most of the projects were stalled in Beijing because the state government of Beijing started clamping down on borrowing. China's Evergrande became the most indebted company in the world by defaulting on its $300 billion global bonds. Debt deadlines are continuously missed by Evergrande. Now, Evergrande is spreading toxic fallout across the economy. The year 2022 proved worse for China. 900 companies recorded losses in the first half, compared to 780 in 2020. Experts are comparing the Evergrande situation to the Lehman Brothers situation. During the 2008 recession, the United States decided to collapse the Lehman Brothers, a company that was considered too big to fail. For now, the major worry is that other developers are following the same path, and whether China will try to save Evergrande remains to be seen. Most of the world has learned to live with the pandemic after two and a half years of the virus. On the other hand, China has followed a strict zero-COVID policy, locking down major cities and closing ports, blocking the way of a quick recovery in normal living. In two weeks, not less than 74 cities have been closed off at different times, and eight mega cities have gone into full or partial lockdowns, and close to 300 million people have been cut off in China. According to Goldman Sachs, cities impacted by the lockdowns account for 35% of China's GDP. China is headed for a crash, and the global impact of it may well be the beginning of another great recession. For Western powers, China's collapse due to global impact is hardly a cause for celebration. In 2022, China's economy accounted for one-fifth of global GDP. Many countries are increasing their trade with China, but with the property sector coming to a standstill and GDP growth dragging toward zero, China is facing a crisis of demand. China needs less iron, steel, timber, coal, and oil. So trade partners like Brazil, Australia, Malaysia, and the Middle East will feel the impacts. For example, for the South American country Brazil, they're generating a trade surplus of approximately $36 billion by exporting close to $70 billion worth of goods to China and importing $34 billion of Brazilian goods. So when a recession comes in China, then Brazil exports to China will plummet rapidly. Then there's the United States. The world's two leading economies remain each other's biggest trading partners, despite aggressive posturing. Every year, the United States purchases more than $300 billion of Chinese goods. U.S. investors, pension funds, and individuals have $2.1 trillion tied up in Chinese companies that are listed on the American exchanges. Slumping China puts all of its foreign currency debt of $2.4 trillion at risk. Sellers of oil and gas in the Middle East and African exporters of raw material and minerals to China are all feeling the impacts of reduced demand. In 139 countries around the globe, China's Belt and Road Initiative has projects worth a trillion dollars. The whole world could be left with unfinished buildings, unpaved roads, and unattended power generation plants if Chinese real estate fails. According to the World Economic Forum, anything that's ailing China is ailing the world, because every percentage decrease in China's GDP causes a 0.3% contraction in the world economy. There was a crisis of mortgage in 2008. It was the crash of housing. In fact, this is the crash of everything. In Europe, there's a gas shock, interest rate hikes in the US, and a real estate crisis aggravated by never-ending lockdowns in China. Everyone linked to China will suffer the consequences. A cold winter is coming for consumers everywhere. No one is safe, but China will be at the forefront.